Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another brilliant webinar from the British Chamber of Commerce in Brazil. I'm Adam Patterson, Deputy Director of Bridgeham in Paraná and also Honorary British Consul in the state. Today, we're talking about the Falkland Islands and the huge market opportunities in the agricultural, tourism, renewable energy and other key sectors. I'm very excited with today's topic. The Falklands are a hugely important part of the global British community and the islands have become a global investment destination with a booming economy and they are now one of the most prosperous places on earth, especially looking at per capita income. I'm interested in finding out a bit more about the opportunities and potential for collaboration with British members and Brazilian firms. So let's get started. First things first, Bridgeham's objective is to support bilateral business between Brazil and the United Kingdom by creating diverse, inclusive, prosperous and sustainable business and social environments that serve our members and help drive growth in trade, industry, services and investment. We have offices throughout Brazil in Sao Paulo, Rio, Paraná and Minas Gerais. And our membership is made up of large multinationals, British firms and leading companies and is focused on networking and business development activity with high decision making and executives in Brazil and the UK. We also have several high-level committees and discussion groups to further enhance our reach, focus, and thought leadership, including sector groups in the technology, agribusiness, human capital, international trade, economy, energy, mining, health, infrastructure, amongst other key sectors. To find out more about each one and broadly um, about Bridgeham, please visit the Chamber's website, www.bridgeham.com.br. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Bridgeham supporting members who, whose brands were widely publicized on the opening slide of this webinar. Uh, also to our uh, brilliant speaker today, Zachary Franklin, Managing Director of the Funkland Islands Development Corporation, for accepting our invitation to bring this very relevant content to our audience and Bridgeham members. And last, but certainly not least, um, thanks to my top-notch colleagues in Bridgeham for all the support and organization. As always, great job. Uh, now, just for a bit of housekeeping, uh, today's webinar is being streamed live through Zoom and YouTube. We will have the speaker's presentation followed by a Q&A session. Around the Q&A, questions can only be sent through the Q&A tool of the Zoom platform. On asking a question, um, we just asked uh, you mention the name of the company before sending questions just for identification purposes. Uh, there will be a curation for the questions being asked. And since there is a, a time constraint today, uh, we apologize for any questions that may not be addressed or answered by our speaker. But saying that, we're very happy to carry on discussions and conversations offline going forward. Now, with that bit of housekeeping flagged up, I would like to introduce today's speaker. Um, Zachary Flanken, Franklin is the current Managing Director for the Falkland Islands Development Corporation. Previously, Mr. Franklin spent more than 12 years living and working in the Asia-Pacific region, where he served as Director at Lehman Bush, the Beijing-based investment ad advisory firm funded by Edward Lehman and Neil Bush, son of George H.W. Bush. He holds degrees from Fudan University and the University of Southern California. So without much further ado, I'm honored to hand over to Zachary and kick off today's webinar. Once again, thanks to everyone tuning in. Zachary, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Good morning, everybody. I hope, can everybody hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up from you, Adam, if you can hear me? Excellent, thank you. Let's get to the presentation. My name is Zachary Franklin, Adam introduced. I am the Managing Director of the Falkland Islands Development Corporation. Um, just go back, can I get a thumbs up, Adam, on your side that you can see the slideshow presentation that I'm sharing that that marries up? You see, perfect, all right, let's go back to that. So today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Falkland Islands, market opportunities in agricultural tourism and renewable energy. Um, and I appreciate the British Chamber of Commerce in Brazil giving us the opportunity to speak to you guys. Let's scroll down. So just a little bit of an introduction here, the Falkland Islands Development Corporation. We are the economic development agency for the whole of the Falkland Islands. We are now in our fourth decade of existence. And what that practically means is we support and assist businesses on the Falkland Islands with the various forms of financial instruments, typically in the form of grants and loans to either help them start up or to expand their business um, so that they can meet the market demands here in the Falkland Islands. Let's go to the next slide. 
Just a little bit of housekeeping on our end for anybody that needs a geography lesson. The Falkland Islands is the small island chain that exists off the southern tip on the eastern side of South America. It's practically speaking made up of an island chain of about 100 islands, the two biggest of which are East and West Falklands. There are two primary population centers on the Falkland Islands, one of which is Stanley, the capital city of the Falkland Islands, and the other one is Mount Pleasant, which is the British military base that exists uh, on the islands. Outside of that, as you can see on the map there, most of the land is open terrain and is primarily farming that exists throughout much of the rest of the Falkland Islands, whether it's the small island, outer islands that exist or the main east and west Falklands. Let's go down. Just flip it back to me so that, flip it back. there we go. And Adam, sorry, I, I'm, I'm screen sharing right now. I just want the thumbs up again. I realize we're a little slow on our end. I just want to make sure you can still see everything. Is that correct? Excellent, okay. Again, I apologize to everybody for that. So the total po civilian population that exists on the Falkland Islands is about 3,662, according to our latest census, with 95% of them existing and living within Stanley. At the military base at Mount Pleasant, there are at any given time about 2,000 personnel there. The nationality is the Falkland Islander, and that makes up almost 50% of the population, with another 23% being British, 7.5% being St. Helenian, which is another British overseas territory that exists in the South Atlantic. Let's go to the next slide. The official language here is English with almost 90% of the population speaking it. We uh, practice the Queen's English. We drive on the left side of the road. We are tethered to the British pound uh, as an overseas territory. 87% of our population is under the age of 65, and we are financially self-sufficient, internally self-governing overseas territory. We have no national debt to speak of on the Falkland Islands uh, compared to most other countries that do have debt exist. We have none. Next slide. There are approximately 400 businesses that exist on the Falkland Islands, and the primary industry is fishing, which started in the 1980s and now encapsulates 60% of GDP. As I pointed out on the map earlier, most of the Falkland Islands outside of the two population bases is in farming. And when you speak of farming, you speak of wool. Um, almost every farm that exists on the Falkland Islands is involved and engaged in some form of sheep shearing, and that contributes overall to approximately 3% of the GDP. The last little bit that we've got as you know, one of the last stops before you get to Antarctica, tourism is a big part of that, and I'll be speaking to that in a little bit. So what we're here today to talk to British Chamber of Commerce and its members about is opportunities that exist on the Falkland Island. And the areas that we believe um, demonstrate some of the sort of areas for growth over the next year and decade. The primary one of which is agriculture, which I'll get into, ag tech and diversification. Tourism in particular, increasing the number of operators and businesses around that area. And the last little bit is renewable energy as the Falkland Islands is very, very con concerned with its environment as a means of generating tourism. Any impact to that environment has ripples across the rest of the economy. So we are hypersensitive and anything related to renewable energy that could exist or be brought to the Falkland Islands is a major interest to the Falkland Islands and the Development Corporation. I'll be touching on at the end, retail, professional, and financial services, but the three main ones we're gonna be walking through are tourism, uh, renewable energy, and agriculture. So let's move on. As I pointed out on the map of the Falkland Islands, what that practically means with regard to farms is there are about 83 farms across the whole of the Falkland Islands. So outside of those population centers, every parcel of land is privately owned in some way, shape or form. And you're looking at vast tracts of open area that exist as sheep shearing. Um, some farms have upwards of you know, 6,000 farms, every uh, 6,000 sheep, excuse me, every farm on the Falkland Islands is engaged in some form of shearing. What's happened over the last two plus decades is where we've had 750 K sheep 
that have existed across the whole of the Falkland Islands. We've now seen a reduction in shearing numbers, where there are about 480,000 sheep currently in the Falkland Islands, producing some point 1,700 tons of wool cup annually. And the reason for that has to deal with what we perceive to be a reduction in the water table across the Falkland Islands, meaning the land is drying up and the water is not being replenished. And as a result, farmers are having to reduce their sheep flocks on an annual basis. Now, given that that is the primary business engaged by all of these farms, the opportunities we're looking for is ways to either replenish or at a minimum to stave off and maintain the current amount of sheep that exists throughout the Falkland Islands. But as it relates to Brazil, if there are businesses, especially within Britcham, that are have applicable solutions to either maintaining these current numbers or in fact being able to replenish or rejuvenate the land that exists within the Falkland Islands, or alternatively, ways in which we could help diversify these 83 farms. So to give them supplemental business that is not primarily sheep shearing, we would be interested in learning and understanding more from the Brazilian market in terms of what opportunities could be to bring those types of businesses to the Falkland Islands in order to support. Now, what that actually leads into the second slide that we'll be getting at, let's go down to tourism, because there are certain amounts of farms that do engage in tourism. They have established what we would consider a lodge, some amount of accommodation that exists for travelers coming down to the Falkland Islands. They can then travel out to a farm, some of them very far flung locations with fantastic biodiversity in terms of the different species of penguins, seals and sea lions and whales that exist. Bird watching is the number one um, reason that most people come down to the Falkland Islands to see what we've got. Some of those farms have diversified themselves by engaging in tourism. And what we're looking to do within the tourism sector is actually expand that further. We do know that we have, in terms of the environment, a very attractive product for people to come see, whether it's our biodiversity, our very pristine air, or just the natural landscape that exists within the Falklands. We do receive 100,000 plus cruise passengers annually, and we can take up to 10,000 passengers with the current flights that exist. But we're looking to expand that. We're looking to grow demand. So it's not while I was speaking previously to the farms that exist, in general, we are looking to increase those tourism um, industry in general without the Falkland Islands. And that includes increasing the number of operators, increasing the amount of destination marketing that can take place, increasing the awareness within the Brazil and the South America market and beyond in order to generate more business as it relates to tourism. It's a tremendous opportunity for growth. And so again, to bring it back to Britcham, are there any businesses we would be interested to learn more about what the membership base has in terms of availability to assist in the tourism sector, given that we are placing a great importance on its growth over the next decade plus? Let's move down to the next slide. And again, the last sort of serious industry that we'd like to touch on is the opportunities that exist within the renewable sector. Every one of those farms that I previously spoke to operate on some combination of wind turbine and solar power. So up until about 20, 25 years ago, the ability to get 24 seven um, energy uh, and power on those different farms was a hit or a miss. Now almost all of those farms operate on some combination in order to have 24 seven access to power. We are continuing and in fact, we would like to explore any of the agricultural sort of renewable technologies that exist from the Brazilian market or abroad that could be brought down to either diversify further the renewable energy offerings within the Falkland Islands or to establish sort of trials um, within those different farm systems that exist around the islands that might be receptive to the different technologies. And so we're curious to learn what within the Brazilian market, wind turbine, hydroelectric, and solar might be applicable and be willing to explore the marketplace in the Falkland Islands. 
Right now, our city base, Stanley, operates on a main grid and it's got about 30% that's coming from the wind turbines that exist here. But it's 50 years old and we would be curious also to learn from Brazil what technology might be applicable or be able to brought down to the Falkland Islands that would be suitable for an aging grid system that may be due for an upgrade and could benefit from running on 100% renewables. So down to the next one. The last areas I can speak to in broad and general terms, um, we are looking at retail, right? As I pointed out in one of the previous slides, there's no brand that exists here. I have no Nike store, I have no Apple, there's no Starbucks. Um, or any chain restaurants. If there are regional brands within the, the South America marketplace, or in fact, UK businesses that have established, um, you know, setups in the retails, especially in the F&D sector that are curious about the Falkland Islands. I recognize I have a smaller population with 3,600 and 2,000 at the base, but an opportunity to expand in the Falkland Islands that would buttress or contribute alongside our tourism offering in terms of growth is something that we are interested in learning, as is the professional services, particularly in accounting and legal. We do offer services, but with 400 plus businesses, and especially with the businesses in the fishing sector who are much larger operations and contribute a substantial amount to GDP, we do know that there are opportunities for a broader base of both accounting and legal firms that could set up in the Falkland Islands to better service the businesses that already exist. The last area that I'd like to point out with regard to financial, especially in banking insurance, credit and investment is there is not a culture of investment that exists in the Falkland Islands. There aren't many investment opportunities. Further, there is one branch of standard chartered bank that exists and that is the central branch of banking that exists. It offers some, it offers basic retail banking and some amount of commercial lending. And so any opportunities around the possibility of providing more credit cards or banking services or commercial lending to businesses that exist on the Falkland Islands, we would be interested to explore that further as up until this point, the Falkland Islands in general has had limited access or access that allows us to do what we want to do, but in terms of growing alongside a global marketplace, we would need more. And we believe that there are considerable opportunities within the financial sector to see that grow. So with that being said, that is my presentation today to Rich Ham. Again, I am Zachary Franklin, the Managing Director for FIBC. And as you can see, if you want any additional information, we've got our website as well as our social media if you'd like to follow. And with that, I appreciate the time that I've had this morning to speak to the Brit Cham Brazil, and I'd welcome it back to Adam and then for a Q&A session. Thank you very much, Zachary, for that brilliant presentation. Extremely um, interesting. Um, we're starting to receive some questions in our um, Q&A panel here. Uh, but let me just jump in and ask a, a few questions just to get the ball rolling um, today. Um, so just going back a bit, are you guys looking to spur more internal economic activity within the Falkland Islands or actually to grow out services in the broader South American region? It's a bit of both at this point. But that being said, the primary focus as it relates to BritCham's member and the South America marketplace is to bring business to us. We'd like to expand. We know that we've got an offering here and we know that there are market opportunities. We would eventually like to see our businesses continue to grow internationally. And that's going to be a big step. But the primary one right now is to see if BritCham as well as South America companies are interested in exploring the Falkland Islands market more. Interesting stuff. Um, just carrying on here. Um, you mentioned a bit about um, uh, banking um, services uh, on the islands, um, but just for a bit of a, a broader view, what type of financial regulation exists on the islands? Um, is there a central bank? Is it independent from the Bank of England? Are you regulated uh, by the UK Financial Authority, so the Financial Services Agency uh, and what have you? 
So interestingly enough, the standard chartered bank that exists here in terms of a, a physical bank branch on the island, that is, they have a monopoly to operate here. So we cannot set up very easily other banks. There is no financial crime that exists on the Falkland Islands. As a result, the financial regulations that exist around the Falkland Islands are not as robust. There's no SEC or equivalent. There's no regulator. The financial secretary in the Falkland Islands government is the primary means by which financial regulation take place. But as a result of that limited exposure, the Falkland Islands is all concurrently doesn't have the reciprocal sort of robust investment and financial culture that exists in more complex economies. So as an overseas territory, we have certain obligations, but we have the ability to grow the financial market within the Falkland Islands if the opportunity were to present itself. As, as a, an example, for instance, one of the big things that Falkland Islanders and people that live here do is that they take out a wise or a revolute card in order digital banking. And that's primarily so that they can access their finances while abroad. And so they've set that up. But having more financial diversification, particularly around how individuals and businesses for that matter can access their capital abroad, which is difficult given that they have to use the local branch of standard charter for international business. Any way to alleviate or to do that, I know Brazil, for instance, has PIX, you know, which is a very convenient way that people can access financing. If the Falkland Islands had access or something in equivalent to that, that would be a benefit to both the retail, but the commercial sector when it came to finance. Yeah, also tourism, right? Um, it's funny as you mentioned the two companies right on the the, the the monetary transfers both obviously british companies active in brazil as well so it's interesting you flag that up um just quickly before i hand over um to, to a question here in our panel um so how does it work on the insurance side right because there must be insurance is there is there opportunities on the insurance side to things as well Yes. So right now there is one insurance company that operates throughout the whole Falkland Islands, but there are there are limited in terms of what they can offer, which has historically been what exists on the Falkland Islands. As we try to grow, we would welcome more insurance companies that would be willing to service the Falkland Islands market, particularly as certain aspects of our economy have grown. And in particular, the fishing one, which as the biggest sector, they would be looking for a whole series of different insurance that could be offered given the robust nature of their business, which sees international vessels coming from such far flung places as Taiwan and Spain down to fish in the Falkland Islands. There, as we get into renewable energy, you know, issues around and questions about insuring businesses that take up that would be also a welcomed opportunity. So. In we've not explored, for instance, a Brazilian insurer, insurance company entering the Falkland Islands market, but we would be happy to assist and provide the information if that were something that were to come on come online. We would be open to that idea. Good stuff. Um, and just picking up on a question from um, one of our members, uh, a question from Neil Montgomery. Uh, Founder and managing partner at Montgomery, a full service Brazilian law firm. Uh, who would like to ask you, Franklin, whether there's any news or updates on the development of a direct air route between um, Sao Paulo and Port Stanley. I flagged up that it was announced that LATAM was going to be operating a direct route. Um, there hasn't been any further news around it. Um, obviously, lots of people would like to go. Uh, more people would like to go rather uh, to visit the Falkland Islands. So I think it's a, a really interesting point as well, if you, if you could just provide a bit of insight on that. Correct. So just for everybody's own edification, historically, there is one direct flight a, a week that exists between the Falkland Islands, and that is from Santiago, Chile, with a stopover in Punta Arenas, and then on to Mount Pleasant with the airport. In 2019, we managed to negotiate an open a Sao Paulo, as you pointed out, Sao Paulo, Mount Pleasant direct route. And that operated for a period of time. It unfortunately opened at the end of 2019 on the eve of COVID. And as a result of COVID, 
all flights stopped. But since we have now reopened, which was in July of 2022, uh, sort of commercially into more tourism coming back to the islands, the Sao Paulo flight has not restarted yet. It's part of what I believe is LATAM's hope to eventually open that flight out. There is no timetable at present for when the GRU MPN route reopens. Obviously, speaking of here, Brits and Brazil, it would be wildly beneficial to have that direct link back. And that's something we hope to see. But at present, there is no timetable on when that route gets reopened. Good stuff. Um, he's hoping we get some good news on that route being opened uh, as soon as possible because the opportunities for tourism and or the broader business opportunities are huge, right? Um, another question from um, Neil um obviously uh from a legal firm was asking what type of other law offices are active in the Falkland Islands and generally how does the legal and court system operate is it based on um UK law and are there any legal and tax incentives for establishing a company on the islands so that you, you've actually, Adam, you, you pointed out perfectly we mirror the UK in terms of our legal system and how we practice so most, if not all, of the attorneys that are not from the Falkland Islands that may, or the solicitors or barristers that have come down have come out of the UK marketplace in order to set up because the, you know, the laws, rules, and practices mirror that of the United Kingdom. What has historically done is the development corporation, when it gets into situations where it would like to see either the accounting and, in this particular case, the legal sector grow, we have actually forced the sector to grow by inviting and in fact supporting law firms, either as sole practitioners or businesses to open up on the, on the Falkland Islands. So what that means is practically speaking, the development corporation has assisted in bringing that individual or business down and helping them for a period of time, usually one to two years in order to build a sufficient book of business that then they can take out into the marketplace as being their own, and then be their own business. So we would, you know, as a point of history, be open to the same methodology for doing that, keeping in mind that the best solution in terms of barristers or solicitors that want to come down to practice are those that have studied UK law. Excellent stuff. And just before handing over to other questions here, just picking up on that around incentives and and broader assistance from from you guys so how does it work on a, on a practical level so a firm be it a, a uk-based firm a british member or a local brazilian firm um, is interested in exploring specific opportunities on the islands how, how does the process flow works with you guys they they reach out and if you want to just give us a bit of flavor on that no certainly so practically speaking as we are is sort of inviting Britcham Brazil member companies to learn and explore. For businesses that do want to take a hard look or can actually address some of the practical um, industries that we've been speaking today, we would, as a, you know, as a historical point, we would be open to the idea of bringing those businesses down to explore and look, if that means supporting them in some way or creating a program, a joint one with Britcham Brazil, we would absolutely invite and support the businesses to come down, you know, for a week or two to explore and to learn practically about the market. We recognize that even though we are so close to South America, there's there's mystery and intrigue about how the Falkland Islands operates. So we'd actually, yes, as a matter of practicality, be happy to bring those businesses down. If it got to a point where a business wanted to set up in the Falkland Islands, the development corporation can, on, on a case by case basis, absolutely look into the feasibility of supporting that business, you know, as a foreign business for a time in order to establish themselves in the Falkland Islands. It's not necessarily guaranteed, but we on we are open and flexible to that idea with anybody that wants to seriously enter the marketplace. No, oh, excellent. Really good to know. Um, just pick up on a few uh, other questions here in our chat. Um, Daniel Taylor is inquiring uh, around the diesel power plant that you, you mentioned in your presentation. 
Um, so what MW scale and would the Falkland Islands be looking for when considering a replacement? And also as an additional point, does the Falkland Islands operate the UK 50 hertz grid system? I don't have those numbers right off the top of my head in terms of, you know, the M MW scale and the, and the actual hertz grid system. So I can get that information to you and circle back um, if that helps. Yeah, I think, as I mentioned in my introduction, I think the idea today is a conversation starter uh, for broader questions yeah. and current conversations online. We can put you in touch with Daniel uh, to respond to these questions, provide a bit more insight. Um, and now picking up on a question from Marcelo Lopez, uh, who would like to know around the quality of the soil of the islands and if there's the possibility of planting some specific um, uh, agro product uh, due to the climatic conditions. Um, so we're looking at diversifying um, the current uh, products that are that are planted and grown on the island. Certainly. So most of the Falkland Islands is what's known as peat soil, um, which if you you know study soil and you know that if you go far enough back, peat is was used to heat homes because it's flammable and you can you can drop it up into blocks and burn it and it will be put in stoves. Obviously, we don't do we don't use peat as a fuel or heating system within the Falklands anymore, not at least there may be one or two farms that still do it as a matter of practice or history, but it's nothing that contributes to our grid system at this point. We do have an amount of crops that grow on the Falkland Islands. We do not have industrial scale or farm by farm cropage growing. You're not going to see acres and acres of food being produced. We do have food that is produced for our population basis. If that could be looked at and explored in terms of, as I'm not the expert, the rest of the climate, in terms of what could be done on the farms, we would obviously be open up to that because it's never been fully explored whether crops could produce on a bigger scale in different parts of the Falklands that have not historically had crops grown on them. No, excellent stuff. Uh, Marcelo adds that his uh, specialities in agribusiness in the retail market and uh, potentially love to go down to visit uh, the Falklands going forward, which potentially could be a, a conversation for another day. Um, picking up now on a question from Jairo Prezi, uh, who asks around, is there any interest in further exploring uh, the offshore wind energy uh, sector? So historically, the Falkland Islands is a windy place in general, and there's not been a need to distinguish between onshore wind you know, farming and offshore wind farming. We've never needed to put turbines in the water in order to generate sufficient wind power. You can simply put the turbines on land. In fact, from a practical perspective, we believe that the cost associated that would be much easier and simpler if it were kept onshore as opposed to offshore. There's never been any serious exploration um, or need for that matter to explore offshore wind farming in the Falklands. Excellent stuff. Um, you know. I've seen a lot of videos. It does seem a very, very windy place, right? Um, just like the UK is very similar uh, in that regard. Um, now, um, a question from Celini Linz, um, who said it was a really interesting presentation. And she asks around uh, how the infrastructure uh, in terms of water, sanitation, uh, waste, what have you, works in the islands. Uh, and if there's any uh, gaps uh, currently and um, broader opportunities uh, to explore these gaps going forward. Certainly. So in terms of water, access to water, sanitation, sewage, infrastructure related systems, the population base is no problems. Most of the farms exist on sort of natural spring or aquifer water that's dug up from the ground and that is filtered locally within the different places. There's there's no issues of, of pathogens or viruses or, or any sort of contaminated water sources in the Falklands. Everything's natural. That being said, there's always the, the issue of, especially as it relates to the rural businesses that exist, of being able to reinforce and further support them. Now, as I pointed out within the agricultural, 
they are having concerns about the water table that exists and its inability to replenish at levels. And so they are, as I've noted over the 20 plus years, they have reduced flock sizes for their sheep. If there were means of sourcing water or generating water, especially as it relates to ag tech or anything of that nature that could, again, help to either stabilize or to rejuvenate um, that if there was a way to add water to the system, that's absolutely something we'd want to explore. I realize, you know, desalination has, for, as an example, has never been tried on the Falkland Islands. And so that there was a practical and affordable ways of doing that, especially bringing it to a smaller, the farms that exist in particularly far flung parts of the islands. If there was a way to, to do that, we'd absolutely be open to that just as much as we would for the population center like Stanley. Excellent stuff. Um, you mentioned a bit about uh, wind power, but looking just a bit more on the broader uh, energy sector, specifically um, oil, and, oil and gas, right? Um, so I saw um, the commercial drilling for oil started uh, around the islands in about 20. 10. Uh, can you give us any current insight or your thoughts about how this currently is going and how we will develop over the, the coming years? It's our understanding that, yes, I mean, that there is that there is oil that has been explored and found in and around the Falkland Islands, um, north of the islands. The timetable on drilling for that and as well as doing anything more around that is unanswered at this point. That's a much bigger discussion for that the development corporation is not directly involved with. So I don't have any information on when that may become an industry within the Falkland Islands. At this point, it's simply found oil that has not been tapped. No, we appreciate that. Um, I did see there's a quite extensive oil reserve, so it's interesting to watch uh, how that uh, develops going forward, which could provide further opportunities as well for British and UK firms. Um, and just quickly, just a few more questions that I've got personally. I mean, I could sit here um, for the next few hours, ask questions, because it's extremely interesting, very curious um, topic. Um, so I'm an economist, and one of the points I mentioned uh, in my introduction is that uh, if you look at PB per capita, the Falkland Islands are some of the richest places on earth. I mean, at the level of Norway, Qatar, um, so it's almost double uh, the UK, depending on which metric uh, you look at. Just out of interest, what, what do you think that's based on? Why, what are the drives behind such a high level of per capita income? It's an impressive metric and a feather in the cap of the Falkland Islands to have uh, such a high GDP per capita, given that we are not a financially based country like other parts of the world. I believe we're sandwiched between Hong Kong and Bermuda in terms of GDP per capita, Hong Kong being one of the financial centers of the world, Bermuda being you know, an offshore you know, haven for uh, uh, you know, for investment vehicles. The Falkland Islands offers neither of those products and yet sits there, sits up there with the, the, the sort of bigger economies. The biggest reason is the fishing that exists. I mean, our biodiversity is tremendous or in and around the Falkland Islands and fishing um, is the primary driver. So the fishing industry has been the booster for how the Falklands has developed. It is estimated that if you are in the Mediterranean and you order calamari, there is a 60% chance that what you are eating has originated in the Falkland Islands. Um, so it's a, we have a very successful fishing industry that has contributed to the growth of the Falkland Islands. It is not expensive to live here. You can have a very good quality of life for a relative, relatively affordable uh, once you are here. So we are, we do not, as a comparable to some of the more bigger and more complex economies, do not have the reciprocal problems that exist with them. It's a much simpler way of life and it, it's a much more laid back and relaxed uh, environment and it's people that enjoy the work-life balance. So there is a benefit to 
the culture that exists here and why it's contributed to such a you know relatively high gdp per capita excellent stuff a really impressive uh metrics um we've received a, a few more questions here um i got one from rogerio cavallo um who inquires around the possibilities in your in your view uh, around greater commercial integration of the islands with uh latin american countries obviously considering at the moment um current logistical difficulties but if you want to just provide a bit of flavor on how you see that developing over the next few years certainly uh obviously our biggest you know means of commercial connectivity there's the latin flight that exists from Chile once a week. It was, you know, for a brief period of time, the Sao Paulo. Outside of that, you've got the Royal Air Force, the RAF Airbridge, flights that exist directly twice per week from the UK. You've also got a shipping from the UK that takes place once, once a month, once a month. And then you have an additional vessel that sails one, once per month from Montevideo to the Falkland Islands. So in terms of practical connectivity with, with South America, your flight from Santiago and your ship from Montevideo are the connectivity issues. How we solve that is gonna be based on being able to develop our demand as well as in growth. We need to, in order to build those logistics and sort of robustness around that, hence part of our reason for speaking with Britcham, among other things, is if we can stimulate more business and activity, we can reinforce and grow those respective links and commercial connectivity. And that's the only way we see in order to expand that logistical connectivity that exists between the Falklands and the rest of the world. Excellent stuff. And just getting to the end um, of today's webinar, uh, mentioned a lot up to uh, you know the potential for you get a hundred thousand tourists per year, potential for ten thousand um each time uh you know so i was researching before today's webinar uh the huge variety of wildlife the key tourist sports the geography uh looks absolutely fantastic so from a tourism point of view when would you say is the best time to visit our tourist season typically takes place from september through april of every year that's when you're going to come and you're going to see the most amount of wildlife that exists on the Falklands. That's when the majority of the penguins will come through all different types. The albatross colonies that exist, that's when you'll be able to really benefit and see. You'll also have the benefit of better weather. Our May, June, July, and August get cold. Um, it does snow here on occasion, but that also means that the respective wildlife disappears for the winter months. So September through April are your best times to come. Excellent stuff. Um, I think on that note, um, I know we just received one more question here. Um, a question from Patricia, uh, who would like to know around um, investment opportunities in the real estate sector. So I think you mentioned that there's no ma major um, hotel or restaurant change. Uh, chains. Um, so do you see any opportunities for, for hotels, resorts developing going forward to, to further leverage um, current tourism and the potential for the island, the islands? There has, there's historically been no investment in terms of what you might think of traditionally in terms of hotels and real estate and expansion in the Falkland Islands. There is real estate that exists, obviously, because People need somewhere to live. There is apartments and homes. But in turn, there are no real estate brokers that exist, for instance. When a property comes on the market, it's simply advertised and bought. We don't have the sort of third-party brokers that exist like much of the rest of the world. So there is the opportunity to build. There's the opportunity to own and manage, particularly if you can set up your business in the Falkland Islands and operate it there on the Falkland Islands, but it does not have the sort of complex history that exists. So in terms of growth, if we build the demand and increase the demand, the reciprocal opportunities around real estate and as especially in around tourism, whether it's hotels, restaurants, or otherwise, we believe that is an opportunity that exists as long as that demand continues to grow. 
No, excellent stuff. I think on that note, um, Zachary, if we can just um, move towards uh, closing out the webinar. Um, so I'm going to hand back over to you just for a few minutes of final thoughts uh, and considerations um, around next steps uh, and any of the further key points uh, that you'd like to flag up uh, before we close out today. Certainly. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of Britcham Brazil uh, and introduce uh, myself, the Development Corporation, as well as the aspirations of the Falkland Islands and what we're hoping to achieve. We're trying to be flexible with all of this. So we know that we have industries that lend themselves to growth and opportunity. We also know that we're a smaller market compared to other places. We're looking to find the, the sweet spot in between. How do we marry the opportunities that exist within the Falkland Islands with our sort of closer neighbors in the South America marketplace and then especially uh, Brazil. As British and Brazil, we recognize that it's a UK centric organization. So there's a much more applicability and an understanding of what exists here in the Falkland Islands at being an overseas territory. And we're hoping as a next step that if you know, Britcham, or we either can directly sort of collate any further follow up or questions. We are, uh, you know, we're happy to provide any additional type of in information. And if it gets to the point where a business seriously wants to explore, we're happy to invite that business down and bring them to the Falkland Islands so that they can explore this. No, oh, excellent. And uh, I'll just quickly, just because we still got a bit of time, uh, last question from Marcelo Lopez again, um, just around, again, the, 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 the food and beverage sector. So is basic food and what have you all produced on the island? Do you, do you import a lot from the UK or other countries? How does that, how, how does that work? So as, as you can imagine, with, a, with a, a large sheep shearing industry, we naturally have an abattoir. So in terms of meat, both sheep, mutton, lamb, and beef, we are able to fully support ourselves as well as export meat. So we have all natural meat products that we can that we can source locally. We do have local produce that is grown that does support and sustain the Falkland Islands. Everything else, as you you've alluded to, is yes, we import a considerable amount. There's no Coca-Cola bottling plant here, for instance. So there's no Coke to to produce. There's no, uh, we do not have, you know, fast food or, you know, chains or chip companies either, you know, to manufacture. So you can't make, there's no Pringles that's manufactured in the Falkland Islands, for instance. Now, all of that other stuff is, yes, imported regularly to the Falklands. I hope there's a lot of import of British beer as well for the pubs, right? Um, excellent stuff. Um, Zachary, so I'm going to close it there. Just the last question from Neil, who just inquired how you ended up on the Falklands. I believe you're from looking at um, your academic background. You're from the US. So you want to just close out by talking about how you ended up uh, working for the Development Corporation on the Falklands? That, yes, you are. By my accent, you can tell I am American uh, by birth. I grew up and born and raised in Philadelphia, uh, college in Los Angeles, then graduate school in China. I've spent more of my life outside of the United States than in the United States. Um, as Adam, you know, mentioned in the introduction, the last uh, work that I had was working with the investment advisory firm for the Bush family, as in the former president of the U.S. and Asia, raising capital for U.S. and other overseas investment opportunities. Um, coming out of COVID, the Falkland Islands Development Corporation had the opportunity um, you know, to have someone come down and to, to lead the organization and to explore different ways of doing things and approaching sort of opportunities that may exist from a different way. And, you know, I put my name in the hat and here we are. Um, so I have been on the Falkland Islands since September of 2022, um, and I will be here for the foreseeable future. And, you know, looking forward to connecting more with BritCham's membership base as the Falkland Islands Development Corporation is a member as well, and um, working towards exploring more opportunities um, between your organization and the Falkland Islands. Excellent stuff. Um, so I think on that note, um, Zachary, we won't take any more of your time. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to chat to us today, flag up the opportunities and the potential to enhance 
uh, cooperation uh, with Bridgechamp firms. Uh, I thank as well the audience uh, for joining us today. We do hope it's been a fruitful and rich learning event for everyone. There's huge potential here. I think today's chat was a first step for raising awareness and get the conversation started between Bridgechamp, um, UK firms, uh, local members, and the Falkland Islands. There's obviously huge opportunities. I think that was clear by the amount of interest and questions. I've never seen so many questions asked um, in a web webinar, um, the recent webinar from Bridgechamps, so that's a huge sign of interest. Um, I also flag up that Bridgechamps upcoming events are available on the website, uh, bridgechamps.com BR, um, and invite everyone to subscribe to the YouTube channel, share the link of the recording of this webinar as well when it's ready. Um, so once again, thanks to everyone, wishing everyone a great Tuesday and rest of the week. At the Proximo event. Obrigado. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Thanks, Zachary.